What is going on guys welcome back and today's video we're going to learn about auto hotkey which is a nice tool that we can use to create custom keyboard shortcuts and automate certain things using keyboard shortcuts on Windows. So let us get right into it. Alright so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to autohotkey.com and you want to download the application. So you click on download, you click on download current version and this downloads a setup file that you just have to save, run and you install the program like always. So nothing that I'm going to show in this video here because it's quite simple and I already have autohotkey installed. Now once you have autohotkey installed you can just run it and you can see that this opens up this documentation program, this autohotkey help program. Here you can just look at the basic tutorial and you can also look up some specific functions if you want to. So mathematical functions, for example, this is something that you might want to look into after today's video because today we're going to cover the basics and uh, some interesting features. I'm going to show you how auto hotkey works and then you can look up some more specific stuff here in the documentation. But this is not the program that we're going to use for the writing of the actual scripts because auto hotkey is based on scripts. We have scripts, we run them and they are running then in the bottom right here as a tray icon we can end them from there as well and these scripts react to keyboard inputs so keyboard combinations or certain things that we type and then they execute certain commands and in order to write those you can use whatever editor you like you can use notepad notepad plus plus atom uh, vs code whatever you want i'm going to use vs code in today's video and for that we're gonna we're gonna get started with a very simple script but first of all we need some boilerplate code here in the beginning uh, just some basic commands here like hashtag no env. Let me just increase the font size for you guys here. Um, this is essentially, as far as I understood, a simple command that makes the script compatible with future releases and also increases performance. So just no env for no environment, I guess. Then we're going to say send mode input. And we're going to say set working directory uh, percent a underscore script directory or script dir and then uh, percent again this essentially sets the working directory to the current directory where this script is running from so if we access any files here now i'm going to save this here on my desktop and the ending that we want to choose is ahk for auto hotkey so we can uh, go here to ahk auto hotkey and we're going to call this script one dot ahk and you can see now that the syntax highlighting is uh, active as well. And the very first thing that I want to show you here is a simple thing called a hot string. So a hot string is essentially just something that when you type it triggers a certain command or a certain output. So we start this by using two colons, then we type whatever we want to type in order to activate this hot string. For example, we can um, take some some shortcut like FTW for for the win like that and then we can use two colons again and then after those two col uh, colons we type what this should translate to so for example i could say for the win this is called a hot string and if we want to add um, a comment what we can do is we can just say semicolon this is a comment or in this case we should say this is a hot string after that, what we do is we return and let me just turn off the copilot here so that we don't get annoying uh, suggestions all the time. But this is now a very basic hot string um, setting that we have in the script. So what we can do now is we can go to the desktop and we can run this script by double clicking. And what you see right now here in the bottom right is that we have this script one AHK running and we have it in here. So I can right click it and I can exit or pause the script if I want to, but now it's active. So if I go to, let's say, a simple notepad and I type some stuff here, nothing happens. But if I type FTW and then space, this translates into for the win. So I just type FTW space and this gives me for the win. And this works everywhere. This also works in the browser. Uh, this works uh, in VS Code. It works absolutely everywhere. So FTW there you go for the win. This is just what this translates to. So a very simple thing, a hot string. Uh, we can do this with all sorts of things and we don't have to necessarily output text. We can also trigger um, some command. For example, I can say here colon colon hello colon colon and then um, 
enter a new line and I'm going to say here MSG box message box. This is a command from auto hotkey. And I want to say you typed hello, for example, and then I want to return. And if I now reload the script, now I'm not, I'm not sure if I can just reload the script. Let's see if there's an option. There you go. Reload the script. Uh, I think now it should also be able to do that. So if I type hello and then space, it gives me this message box you type hello. Also true for this start menu here. So if I type hello space, it does the same thing. And of course, also for for the win, it does the same thing everywhere. When I write text, this translates into that. Uh, so quite useful sometimes if you have to use some um, short keywords like this to to generate a bunch of text or to to trigger some command here. Um, another thing that we can do here is we can do combinations. So we can say, for example, a certain character has to be pressed in combination with a certain other character to trigger something. So what I can do here, for example, is I can say I want the character H to be pressed with control. And for control, we have a certain um, a certain symbol that represents control. So I don't just say CTRL. What I say is um, this hat symbol here. Now I'm not sure what the actual name of this symbol is, but it's usually when you have a variable like x, you have x hat. So I'm going to call this the hat symbol here. And if I now say hat and h, and then colon colon, this whatever this is will be triggered when I press this and it will um, execute the script code here. <clears throat> so what I can do here is I can say send, and then I can send hello. Okay, in this case, my script is still active. So let's exit. This will send hello world. Now let's delete this real quick. And then we're going to return here. And we're going to run the script again. So we're going to go to the desktop. Now it's running again. And now I can go to the notepad and press control H and you can see this produces hello world. As you can see. So we have of course, also other keys that we can use. So we can use, um, for example, I'm going to add this as a comment here. Uh, we can use hat for control, we can use um, hashtag for the Windows key for the super key. Um, we can use an exclamation mark for alt. And we can use plus for shift. So those are the most important uh, ones, I guess. And we can of course combine them now. So for example, what I can do now, let's let's do something more complicated is what I can do is um, hat and then plus. So basically control and shift and then also J. I'm just going to pick the letter J now because I don't think that there's a combination control shift J. Um, and this should do the following thing, it should run notepad X so a notepad executable, then it should say when active, uh, when activate or yeah, when activate, and then we need a win title here. So the title usually when we don't save it is untitled notepad. So what we're going to do is we're going to say untitled dash notepad. And then win wait active. Same thing. Untitled notepad. And then we're going to send hello world. Then I can also delete this one here. And then we're going to return in the end. But now if I reload the script, and let's say I close notepad. And now I say, control shift J, this opens notepad and immediately writes hello world. So this is a more complicated script. So we first run notepad, then we activate the window. So we, we put it into focus, we focus on the window by using these two commands here based on the title. Um, and then we send the string hello world into this window that we're focusing on. So there's one thing that we can do. Another thing that I think is quite useful because we cannot do this really in Windows. Um, natively, we can do it on Linux, on most Linux distributions, you can just set uh, set up key to, uh, keyboard shortcuts for all sorts of things. But what I really like to do on Linux is I like to use for example, Windows key and enter uh, to open my command line, or for example, you can use uh, what is the usual command alt um, what was it? Alt and Alt Control and T, I think, to open a terminal on Linux. So we can do the same thing here. We can just say, okay, exclamation mark uh, or Control and Alt. 
and then t and what we want to run is cmd exa like this now let's reload this again and then what was it uh alt control t there you go opens up cmd so there's one thing we can do we can also do what i said first so we can say windows key and t uh, because i don't want to use enter here um and then run cmd exa as well return there you go and then reload the script there you go and then windows t there you go terminal um, we can also use the end operator to combine keys that are not um, not keys like shift, win, alt, and so on. And in order to do that, we can, for example, say numpad 0 and h. And if we combine those two keys, we should get a message box, you typed 0 and h. <clears throat> now let's reload this again. And if I now say zero H at the same time, you type zero and H or maybe pressed because typed could be one after the other. So let's reload this again, bam, zero H. But if I now use the ordinary zero and H, this does not work. So it only works with numpad zero. So this is what you can do to combine uh, keys that are not these special modifiers. Um, that's one thing. And now let's get to some more um, interesting commands here that I thought of. Um, I mean, they're not necessarily uh, anything special, but something that can be actually quite useful. For example, I have a video on how to pimp your terminal. And then I, there I show you that you can use the terminal app and you can use the Windows subsystem for Linux with style and so on. And one thing that I like to do is I like to just have a shortcut to open the Windows terminal. And how do you do that? First of all, you want to have a combination. Now, in my case, um, let's just delete all this here. In my case, I'm going to use hashtag and then enter because this is my Linux shortcut. And um, then we're going to run here something. Now, if you don't have a shortcut, you need to have a shortcut for your terminal. So you just go to terminal, you right click. Um, or how did I do that? Actually, um, I think um, I think I went to documents. Let me just see here real quick. Uh, there you go documents and then somewhere here I have this terminal link. So if we go to properties, essentially, this is uh, targeting the Windows terminal app. So I just created a simple shortcut to the terminal app. And then what I do here is I just provide a path. So I say C users, flurry documents and then terminal dot LNK, LNK. And then what I do is I again do the win activate and win wait for active. So win activate and I think when I run the terminal, the title is neural nine add desktop and then whatever the identifier is in your case. So I'm going to wait for neural nine at desktop dash HCI six N one. And then I'm going to do the same here with win wait active and then return like that. So let's reload again. And then now I press Windows enter and this opens the terminal immediately. So this is one thing that I like to do. Um, another thing is that we can also focus certain commands on the application uh, on a specific application. So for example, a shortcut that I have in the terminal should not be available outside of the terminal. So I can say that after opening this terminal, for example, I want to have certain shortcuts in this script here that only work inside of that terminal, but they don't work anywhere else. <clears throat> and how you can do that is you can just say here, if when active, and then you use the win title, in this case, we're going to use again, the um, come on, the neural line at desktop and so on. So we do it like this. If this is active, and we don't need this colon actually here, if this is active, what we do is we say, okay, for example, uh, Windows key combined with space has a certain functionality, it opens a message box, you pressed the shortcut in terminal, something like that, then we return. Now, one thing that's important is that when you have this if when active, 
and something after it, everything that comes after it will be only applied to if when active. So if you want to reset this for all the following things here, you just have to say if when active without anything. So just like that. And then whatever you write here will no longer be limited to the terminal in this case. So we can reload again. Then I have this. And now if I go to VS Code and I press uh, Windows space, nothing happens. It actually changes my keyboard layout. But if I go inside of the terminal here and I press Windows space, you can see you press the shortcut in terminal. This is because this command here checks if we're in that window. And since we are, this now exists outside of the scope, it does not exist. So that's that. Um, then I have here a couple of things that uh, might be interesting to know. For example, since we have these identifiers here, since we have these symbols representing the individual keys, we also need to distinguish between those symbols and the actual um, keys like control win and alt and so on. So how would we do something like, for example, uh, if I want to say a keyboard shortcut, control J does the following, it sends um, this is some message, for example, and then I return. Now, let's say at the end of this year, I want to have um, an exclamation mark, can I just do this here? Oh, what did I do now? Can I just do this here? No, this does not work because this would represent a control key. Now, if I want to do this, what I have to do is I have to say, curly brackets and inside of those curly brackets, I have the exclamation mark. So I can now reload the script. And I can um, go for example, to notepad. And I can just say, control J, and then you can see this works. If I just do it like this, without the curly brackets, when I now reload the script, this will have a different effect. So control J, you see, there is no exclamation mark. And the reason for that is because this key here means alt. So now we're pressing the actual key here. This, however, is not the same thing as uh, this is not the same necessarily for all the different things. Now, one thing that we can do, for example, is we can send here also the keyword enter in um, in uh, what is it in curly brackets. And you can see that in this case, now I'm actually not sure what happens in this case, but let's see, this now presses enter. But the problem is you see that it gives me the arrow sound because this here is not an exclamation mark, but this is the alt key. So what we want to do is we want to have this here as an actual character, reload again. And now if I do this, you can see that this actually works. So it produces the actual enter line break. Uh, but I can also use enter as an ordinary word. So I can say, for example, uh, sent. This is just enter. And then if I do this again, you can see this is just enter as an actual uh, word. And then we have the enter the line break here at the end always uh, with the enter inside of these curly brackets. So sometimes when you put it into curly brackets, it becomes a command and sometimes it becomes the actual symbol. So exclamation mark without curly brackets is actually um, a function. So it's actually pressing alt. Uh, and if you put it in curly brackets, it gives you the actual symbol with enter, it's the other way around. If you just write it, you get it as a word. And if you put it into uh, curly brackets, you get the actual function of the key. Uh, you can also use send input, by the way. So you can say, come on, send input. And then reload this again. This also works. Um, and then what do I have here else, uh, we can also have a combination for focusing on Windows, this is something that I think is kind of cool. Uh, we cannot only do something like if when active, we can also see if when exists, and then we can focus on that window. So for example, we can say, if a window exists, and the title of the window is neural nine at desktop dash HCI six and one. And then I want to have the uh, shortcut windows. Um, yeah, let's go with windows alt T. What we do here is want to say win activate. Then let's copy this here. And 
And then when activate this, here again, we don't need the comma. Here we do need the comma. And here we want to say win wait active. And then return. And here we can again do win if win exists so that everything after that is not limited to that window anymore. So now I can just say reload. And in this case, if I press now Windows Alt T, this focuses onto the terminal, if the terminal does not exist, Windows Alt T, nothing happens. And then last but not least, I want to show you three little things that we can do here. Uh, we can do, for example, the typical thing that I like to do on Linux to close windows is Shift Alt C. So Shift Alt C closes the window, we can do that here as well. So uh, exclamation mark plus C. And then this should do sent. And what we want to send here is Alt F4. So we want to send exclamation mark and then F4. F4 needs to be put into curly brackets to trigger the function of the key F4. And then we can just return. So now if I reload, and if I open the notepad here, and now I say Alt Shift C, this does the same thing as F4. Um, this should also work here. So Alt Shift C, there you go. And this is how you can do that. Also, we can use the function keys not only um, as something we sent, but also as something we recognize. So for example, I can say, if I have a control F six, for example, I want to open a website. So I can say, for example, run HTTPS neural nine.com return. There you go, reload, and then control F six opens neural nine.com. So this is also a thing that we can do. And last but not least, uh, let's do something like um, a shortcut to end the actual script so that we don't always have to click down here, we can do something like, for example, control Q. And then we just type exit app, return. Reload. And then control Q. And now you can see the script is no longer running. So those are the basics. Those were just some examples, you can do a lot more things. As I said, you can just go to the auto hotkey help application, you can look up a, a lot of different things. We have loops, we have file access, we have variables, we have ifs, we have a lot of things that you can learn here. This is not a course on auto hotkey, I just wanted to show you what you can do with it. And you can go deeper now. And of course, if you are really fascinated by this, if a lot of you guys are interested in that, of course, I can also make a more advanced tutorial, maybe even a full course on auto hotkey depends on your feedback. So if you want to see more of that, let me know. Uh, but that's it. This is uh, how you can use auto hotkey to automate certain processes using custom shortcuts on Windows. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and 